What's up guys, StuDog here, welcome back to some more Dueling Book Duel Commentary. First Dueling Book Duel Commentary post Code of the Duelist. Dang, I'm a big fan of those Gorse tokens. Dang, those look so cool. So, yep, here we go, Blackwing Gofu the Vague Shadow, bring out these two Gorse tokens. Since when did Gofu summon Gorse tokens? <laughs> So go gofu equals gores. <laughs> that's all, that's all I got to say about that. And we got FBI here in the watchers chat again, two weeks in a row talking about the frying pans. All right, I, I need to stay on topic this time. So here we go. It's just gonna be the double link spider into the first turn to code talker. And now we get to see the powerful Gazuki normal summoned to send the Mizuki to the graveyard. Mizuki loves Mizuki. Two peas in a pod right there. So yeah. First turn to Code Talker for free seems pretty good. With the Link Spider, Link Spider, and the Gofu itself. So they have to be effect monsters, of course. So you cannot use the tokens for the Code Talker. And I just got a new friend request, so that's pretty awesome here. So I'll check that out after this match. We got Tim the Goat here at 853 going up against. The land hour at 243, and there was the clutch dank hole activated to destroy the decode talker and the gazuki. And then he conveniently has the ice bell to go for his first turn combo crystal wing burn for 1300. And then, I mean, he can attack, of course, because it's not the first turn of the game, so he'll attack for 3000 while in the meantime burning for 1300, of course. So yeah, this Wind Witch engine is still clutch, Crystal Wing is still a phenomenal card, but it was really that Dark Hole that put in a lot of work that Decode Talker was sitting pretty at 2800 attack points. Still wouldn't have done enough though to deal with the Crystal Wing. So it's going to be Tricksters here. Terraforming activated to get the Trickster Light Stage. So yeah, finally seeing some different decks other than Zoo and Draco's, so awesome. There's the Candina searched off the light stage. As this has that Sola Silver Mountain effect to freeze back row, but hey, there's no back row, so you won't be able to get any use out of the second effect of this just yet. Pot of Neg 9 activated. Banish 10 to draw 2. He's already halfway through his deck, more than halfway through his deck. Gonna normal summon Candina after he plays the Desires, because deck thinning and searching is bad, apparently. Because, like, what else are you going to normal summon? Was he going to no normal summon something else off the desires? I don't know about that ordering in general, but I guess, who cares? He's going to add the reincarnation attack directly for 4,800 to the dome. And then the uh, light stage will burn for the clutch 200 each time a trickster monster inflicts battle damage. So, yeah, this will bring our player in the red down to 1,700. This could be a fast game. <laughs> that dang cool. Yeah, I'm gonna press two to that FBI, okay? So anyway. Quick effect, you can reveal this card. Oh wow. That, that was a new text. I remember this didn't actually say I don't believe this actually said quick effect on the old text of this card. Anyway, he's just gonna do that and I believe that'll just be enough to burn or any either way our Link player, zombie Link player. I don't even know what deck he's playing. He's just gonna scoop it up. That dark hole in the crystal wing. That that was a phenomenal opening for Tim to goat. He must be the goat with that opening, cause God, that was the literally the best possible opening. The free pluses were real. You got the free, you know, pot of desires plus one. You got the free crystal wing. You had the dark hole free plus one, which pushed, which allowed him to push, you know, around five thousand points of damage. And these guys side decking relatively quickly. And we're going to go straight into game number two. As game number one, only four minutes, 20 seconds long. Hopefully this can be a much shorter episode than last week's. And from the looks of uh, Lelanowar's -la -la hand, whatever his username is, apparently this could be a swift 2-0 well as his hand sucks. He's just going to set a monster. And pass it back to Tim, and Tim conveniently opens up the Ice Bell two games in a row. Oh, God. So 
Such skill right here, boys. Such skill. So, yeah, we're going to go for the free crystal wing and then burn for 1300. He can attack over this monster and not have to fear anything because crystal wing can just negate it. Unless we're going to see like some random effect veiler use, but pretty sure he would have effect veilered a long time ago. Probably would affect Veiler the Glass Bell to deny the search. Cannot affect Veiler the Ice Bell. Well, I mean, you can, but it won't. It doesn't stop the search because it's just weird like that. Terraforming activated to add this light stage. And again, it seems like it's the same exact opening from game number one. Complete Deja Vu. He just needs the Pot of Desires. This time, he's going to normal summon the Candina before Pot of Desires. Oh, he doesn't even have it anyway. That's going to attack right into the Vendred Hound Horde. So it's going to be this new archetype zombies. That's why we saw the Mizuki and the Gazookis in game number one. 2,100 defense points. So Tim will lose 300 points of damage at least. So thankfully for her player in the red, he still has a decent chunk of life points left. Tim wanted to get a little greedy there. He thought 1,800 attack would be enough to kill any set monster. But wasn't really rewarded for that risk. As he just missed out on some damage if he would have played it safe and attacked Crystal Wing into the set monster. So anyway, I mean at least he can bring this back for free. Can discard a Vendred card, a special summon this card from the grave. But it banishes when it leaves the field. It was kinda like that one Synchron card. Kind of like the kind of like a Quillbolt Hedgehog or something. Kind of like a Plague Spreader Zombie, right? Yeah. It reminds me of Plague Spreader Zombie. Instead of stacking on top, you just pitch from the hand. So okay, he's gonna discard the Raven Dread Slayer Ritual Monster to revive this card. And apparently Crystal Wing is not going to negate that. He's just playing defense at this point. He's going to set a monster. Pass it back to Tim. My main man, Timmy boy. Timmy, Tim, Tim. Light stage. Use its freeze effect. To freeze that back row. And apparently that's fine. That's going to get bounced back to the hand for the Lycoris. Big fan of this guy's TCG name because the OCG name is kind of hard for me to pronounce. So, good job, Konami. You did something right for once in your lives. Good name change. Usually not the biggest fan of name changes. But it seems like this set, Code of the Duelist, um, I like some of the name changes. Like, I, I actually like... Spellbook of Knowledge honestly sounds better than Spellbook of Rudra. At least in my opinion. Well then... He didn't learn his lesson the first time. He's going to attack the Candina into another one of these hound hordes. And that 2100 defense points is somehow keeping our player in the red alive. And during the end phase, this Solemn Strike will just die thanks to this beautiful field spell. Isn't that just clutch? Rip the Solemn Strike. What does the chat have to say about that? Actually, they don't got anything to say. They're just spamming space bar because of the silly gooses that they are. Big shout out to the space bar contest in here. Oh yeah, that's what kids call space bar contest. I missed it. It's back to Land's turn. He's gonna normal summon the Rev Inance. Some ugly guys right there. That's all I gotta say. And he's going to attack, and that's going to get met with the Blazing Mirror Force. So both players will take 900 burn damage. And now we'll use the effect of this guy. Destroy by opponent's card effect. You can special summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. And, yep, Crystal Wing is going to say no-no to that. And we get to see the Brooklyn Rage from our player in the red. So, again, very nice to finally have a short episode of this segment. Thank you. Not even 10 minutes long. So nice. You never know what you're going to get. Some weeks it's like 30, 40 minutes. Like last week, 37 minutes. This week it's just a short 
10 minute episode trickster is just poning some phenomenal openings from tim the De- goat that that is all i gotta say about that tim the goat he's the goat man so anyway thank you all for watching this episode of dueling with dual commentary as always we'll be back next week with some more and until next time this has been stew dog and i'm signing out